Hey guys, sleep is something that seems to be really undervalued in our society. A good night's rest is almost seen as something for the weak. Some of the most influential people like Benjamin Franklin and Nikola Tesla, or even Barack Obama and Donald Trump, brag about how little sleep they get. But sleep is extremely important, especially for young people like me, who are still growing both mentally and physically. So if adolescents need 8-10 to 10 hours of sleep a night to function, then why do I and many other high schoolers start school at 7 a.m.? Well, the simple answer is because of busing. In many school districts, they have to stagger start times so that one bus can drop off and pick up both elementary, middle, and high schoolers. And we really also don't want elementary schoolers waiting at a dark bus stop at 6 a.m. Plus, earlier start times means that schools have earlier end times allowing high schoolers to work or do extracurricular activities. But even with that being said, waking up at 6 a.m. five times a week just to go to school seems kind of crazy. To get the recommended nine hours of sleep, I would need to go to bed at 9 p.m. every night, which is laughable to most teenagers. In fact, teenagers produce the sleep hormone melatonin later than they did during childhood meaning that they have a two-hour shift in their sleep-wake time, making it most natural for them to go to sleep at around 11 p.m. and wake up at 8 a.m., which is obviously not possible. Now, according to the CDC and a slew of other studies, insufficient sleep can lead to higher chances of obesity and depression, as well as drug, alcohol, and even caffeine use. Also, in a study of 9,000 students from eight high schools, it was seen that extending the start time by an hour and a half reduced the number of car crashes from teen drivers 70%. Now these factors are all really important to consider. But today I want to ask, what is the impact of sleep on education? Well, sleep has a really big impact on what we learn. In fact, the brain sort of consolidates what we learn during the day while we sleep, and it practices it. During REM sleep, our brains process complex and emotionally charged things, along with procedural things, so remember how to do things, like solving math problems, or how to get huge killstreaks in video games. In that same study that included 9,000 high schoolers, attendance rose 1 or 2% when start times were pushed back, which makes sense, as they had a little bit of time to, you know, sleep in. But what I think is most interesting is the impact in academic performance. First off, they saw a significant rise in average GPA in most schools and a rise in standardized test scores in a few. In a separate study, it was also seen that failing students got an average of 30 minutes less sleep a night than A and B students. Now this isn't an isolated problem. Anywhere from 75 to 100% of public schools in various states start class before the recommended time of 8.30. This causes 80% of adolescents to get less than the recommended amount of sleep. So for now, I can't really change my school's start time, but I can try to get more sleep. Now for a while, I've heard that you should avoid your phone, computer, and TV screens an hour before bed. Now when I first heard this, I really wanted to think that it wasn't true, because, well, I like technology. But as I kept seeing this more and more, and I finally read into it, it started to make a lot more sense. You see, our bodies use a hormone known as melatonin to regulate sleep. So when it is dark out, melatonin is released, telling our bodies it is dark and time to get some rest. However, with all these artificial lights and screens, our bodies may not know it is nighttime. The blue and white colors given off by screens can especially mess this up, keeping us awake longer than we really should. And so this all sounds really good in practice, but will it actually make a difference in the amount and the quality of sleep that you get? Well, I'm going to run a little experiment to see. Now, it won't be anything super scientific, but for the next five nights, I'm going to avoid screens an hour before bed. Now using this cheap little sleep tracker, I can measure how much sleep I get, as well as the quality of the sleep and how much of it is REM sleep. So I guess I'll see you in a week. If you look at the sleep tracker data, we see that on average, I got 36 more minutes of sleep 
when I avoided screens. I also saw an increase in the amount of REM sleep I got, which again is where a lot of memory consolidation happens. So while changing the start times for schools may be a bit difficult, avoiding screens before bed should help you to get a bit more sleep and make you a more productive and hopefully a generally nicer person. Now I know that completely cutting out electronics before bed is tough, but on most phones you can switch to night mode and you can get certain applications for your computer that do the same. And this will help to cut out a lot of that white and blue light. Also, I found that tracking my sleep really helped me to get more sleep. You can track your sleep with most smartwatches or bands, or if you want to, there's an affiliate link to the cheap one that I used down below. Now, this video was created as part of an education collaboration with a bunch of other great educational YouTube channels. So linked down below is a uh, playlist where you can go and watch all of them. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating this video, then please leave a like or subscribe. Thanks.